Today on Don't Talk TV, I want to give you a bit of a rundown on things to keep in mind if you encounter a ride program, especially as we approach what's commonly called the May 2-4 weekend. Hello, my name is Nicholas Wansbutter. I'm a criminal defense lawyer in Stratford, Ontario, Canada, and welcome to Don't Talk TV. So this week I'm incredibly busy with trials most of the week, and I, so I only have time to do a couple of quick videos, and I thought with the May long weekend approaching, and people may well want to enjoy a few beverages over that weekend, we know the police will be out in full force running ride programs, so I thought it would be a good time to give a few pointers to keep in mind in the event that you encounter one of these programs. So first of all, what is a RIDE program? RIDE is an acronym that stands for Reduced Impaired Driving Everywhere. In Ontario this takes the form of police checkpoints set up at strategic locations where they believe they'll encounter the highest number of people. They stop every single vehicle that approaches that section. There'll be a number of police cruisers set up with lights and number of police officers set up to screen individuals. So when you pull up to the vehicle, they'll ask you a number of questions and it may end in having you blow into a roadside screening device to determine your level, of, to determine whether you have more than the allowable amount of alcohol in your body. So just as a reminder, the legal limit of alcohol in your body, regardless of whether you're impaired or not, is 80 milliliters of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. Roadside screening devices are calibrated to 100 milliliters of alcohol per 100 milliliters of blood. So if you blow 100 or over, you'll register a fail. If you blow between 50 and 100, that'll register as a warn, which is a 24-hour roadside suspension. And anything under 50 will be a pass. My number one recommendation to individuals is always have a designated driver. I don't recommend driving with any amount of alcohol in your body because it just opens yourself up to, at minimum, some invasive investigation, and at worst, to criminal charges. So let's just go through the process of what generally happens at a ride program. The first thing you'll be required to do is to provide your driver's license, owner registration, and proof of insurance. This is standard for any traffic stop. You have no choice. You have to hand these items over. Therefore, my advice to you is hand them over. Have them ready. As soon as you pull up to the ride program, get them out, get them ready. And when you get up to the officer, have those right in hand to hand to the officer. The second thing that generally happens is police will ask, have you had anything to drink today? Now, when the Cannabis Act came into force in 2018, there were some significant modifications that were made to the criminal code. And one of these is that the police no longer require a reasonable suspicion that you have alcohol in your body in order to make a roadside screening device demand if you're operating a vehicle when they encounter you. Now the criminal code allows for police to stop anyone anytime that's driving a vehicle and make a demand for roadside screening device. Now that said, many defense lawyers are salivating waiting for the police to actually do that and make a charter challenge. At least locally in Stratford, I've always seen the police operating as if the law is the way it always was before, where they needed a reasonable suspicion that you have alcohol in your body in order to make that demand. So I, I haven't seen police making a demand unless they have reason to have that suspicion. Now, an odor of alcohol can give that reasonable suspicion or an admission of drinking. So if you admit to drinking any amount of alcohol, even if you say the classic two beers or you say I only had one, they now have that reasonable suspicion and they will make a demand that you provide a sample. Now, I absolutely do not recommend that you lie to police. To the contrary, you should never lie to police because that's a crime. However, you do have the right to remain silent even at a ride program, and your silence cannot be taken as proof of guilt. Police may well make a demand regardless, and I've, I have seen cases where police have taken silence as an admission of drinking, but I haven't fought those cases in trial, but I've been able to get the Crown to agree to a plea to drive careless instead of drive impaired because of the potential of a successful charter challenge in a scenario where police took silence as an admission of drinking. So your options are either to remain silent or tell the truth. Just keep in mind that if you admit to having consumed any amount of alcohol, you will be blowing into that roadside screening device. Thirdly, police may attempt to identify the passengers in your vehicle. 
This is an unlawful search. Police do not have the right to identify passengers in a vehicle. As with a bad breathalyzer demand, if identity is handed over pursuant to an unlawful search and something ultimately comes of that, there is the potential for defense counsel to argue a constitutional breach and have any charges thrown out. Finally, the police may well demand that you provide a sample of your breath into a roadside screening device. My advice is always comply with that demand. Even if you think that they're making that demand unlawfully, even if they're clearly making it unlawfully, it's still in your best interest to blow because it's very easy for the Crown to prove a refuse to blow charge. There's much more for me as defense counsel to work with if you blew, and then I can make the charter argument later. So leave it for a lawyer to argue whether it was a lawful demand or not. You should blow and cooperate fully. They're actually very easy to blow into. Just give a continuous breath and we'll deal with whatever the results are later. There is nothing to be gained by refusing to blow or playing games by not blowing enough or putting your tongue over the, the nozzle. So these are some quick points to keep in mind if you encounter a ride program. This video is not legal advice. If you have a situation where you need legal advice, call a lawyer. Call another lawyer or myself. My 1855 number and website are listed below. I'd be more than happy to give you some quick advice. If there's any topics you'd like to see me cover on Don't Talk TV, please leave a comment in the comment section below or send me an email. And if you found this video helpful or informative, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing, or following me on Twitter or Facebook.